Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Jason Mellon. I'm the Associate Director of Programming and Production here at Katuit Center for the Arts, and I am joined by Holly Hansen, the one woman wonderkind behind uh, our upcoming production of Charlet, uh, starring, starting uh, February 5th and 6th. Uh, Holly, how are you doing? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I'm talking to you, and that's fun. <laughs> for future reference, because I know this video will be looked at for years to come, we are in what we hope is the tail end of a global pandemic, and everyone's sort of at that place where you say, how are you doing? How are you doing? And everyone sort of says, I've got it figured out, so better than I was. Right? But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you are doing a show, like that's how good you're doing. We finally figured out how to make some theater happen yeah. in uh, 2021 here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your play, Charlay? Am I saying okay. that well? You are, beautifully, I assume, <laughs> but yes. Um, it is a one woman show uh, about uh, this Irish woman, Siobhan, who is essentially in this love triangle or quadrangle. Uh, with her Irish boyfriend, he's a farmer, uh, his prized cow, which is a Charolais, it's a French breed of cow, and his mother, uh, Breda, who is mean, to put it <laughs> nicely, and without having to censor myself. Uh, but uh, Siobhan, uh, you know, as Siobhan, I play all the characters, I play both the boyfriend, the mother, and the cow, and Siobhan has been developing some murderous uh, thoughts and tendencies towards both the mother and the cow. And you kind of get to see the development of her relationship and how all those murderous thoughts play out. So, you know, good old fashioned yeah. fun. Yeah. Standard story. <laughs> woman loves man. Woman hates cow. Exactly. Woman plus to kill cow and mother-in-law. Yeah. What would you say based on that is the tone of this show? I, you know, it's, I keep thinking of it as like, oh, darkly comedic or, you know, it's it's a black comedy. But the word that keeps coming up is like twisty to me. But it's, you know, it's so funny so that it doesn't go full dark. But there's, there's definitely some moments that you can't believe they're joking about the subject they are. <laughs> yeah, I having, you know, I'm doing sound for this production and I can verify there are many moments like that. Uh, <laughs> twisty is such a good word for it. it it's, a, it's a show where the plot sort of goes in directions and uh, the character of Siobhan, you're sort of rooting for her one next and then saying, call the police. <laughs> right. Slow your roll, Siobhan. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is definitely hilarious. You are hilarious uh, in it. And it has such a good ending. I've talked to a couple people, you know, about the plot of the show, and I always say, and then the ending, and then they, some of them say, well, I don't care about spoilers, tell me what it is, and when I tell them, they're just, yeah, ah, it's very, uh, it's exciting, which is rare in a one-person show, because you, you have one, it's hard to do action it's a lot to just by on. yourself, yeah. uh-huh, but uh, it's a, a fantastic ending, and like you said, it is definitely uh, very funny to do. Uh, have you done a one-person show like this before? I have not. Um, this was definitely uh, <laughs> a daunting task initially, um, but I was excited for the challenge, and it was just, you know, it was an honor just to be asked, but it was even better to, like, get to, you know, to do this thing and to put the work in, um, especially at a time where you really can't be doing a lot of, super collaborative theater at the moment uh, because sure, of social yeah. distancing. Um, obviously we, you know, stayed well within safe parameters and we're super safe for that, but it was only really for the majority of the time, myself and the director, Tara Galvin in the room, far apart and well masked. Um, there was something very intimate about that. Um, uh, not having done a one person show before, it's just you and the director the whole time. And the work that you get to do because of that, the focus um, is really remarkable. You know, it was a really enriching experience, even, you know, aside from the fact of, oh man, it's just me talking the whole time. <laughs> 
What was it? Uh, I'm curious what it was like working with Tara. Uh, Tara, you know, has directed shows in our Black Box. She's a longtime stage manager, a very familiar face to performers, uh, you know, here at Katuit Center for the Arts. Uh, what did she say about why she wanted to do this show uh, with you? You know, it was, um, I've never actually worked with Tara before outside of things like Entertainment Tonight, where she's, you know, stage managed the entire mm -hmm. um, talent um, portion of the evening. Um, I've never actually gotten to work with her one on one. Uh, and she sent me an email and, you know, she had been discussing this play uh, with uh, Mary Arnold um, and they were talking about, oh, possibilities for this. And my name came up, which I take as a huge compliment that they thought of me for this, especially having not worked in like worked with Tara before. Um, and, you know, she sent me, you know, the scripts and she was like, check it out. <laughs> then let me know how you feel, because she was aware of its kind of, you know, little bit wicked, little bit dark kind of vibe. Um, and as soon as I read it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally in. <laughs> like, I think I was in by the end of the first paragraph. A and it's just been lovely with Tara. Like there's a lot of opportunity to bounce back and forth about ideas, um, you know, in a selfish way. I'm like, great. I was the only actor she had to talk to during this. <laughs> so I got all of her focus. <laughs> Um, but it was really great. We developed, I feel like, a good rapport and a good understanding of each other and how we both work and how we work with that material. Yeah, she was balancing a lot. Uh, if you don't know, she directed two shows at the same time, uh, two one-woman shows. Uh, I'll put a link to a video about the other one uh, on the, this video as well, uh, The Humors of Bandon, starring uh, Emma Fitzpatrick. But uh, she had a, a lot to balance. And I know early on in the process, uh, you know, she talked to David about doing these shows, uh, you know, last year after we finished our Entertainment Tonight online. So it's been a lot of months of sort of, well, maybe next month we'll be able to, <laughs> well, perhaps next, okay, but by the new year we'll, <laughs> <laughs> and we sort of uh, landed where we have, uh, excuse me, my losing earbud here, uh, to this sort of uh, online only presentation. Uh, so I'm curious about that. We've had a couple of tech rehearsals now, uh, and you have performed for the same audience in the room you'll be performing for. <laughs> a wonderful uh, audience. Don't get me wrong. A, an thank you. I, of less than five. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just the, the tech managers and Tara who are, are watching this over and over again. Uh, you know, I'm an actor myself, and I'm watching you do it, and I cannot imagine what it feels like the know that there's not going to be anybody there. Um, what are you thinking about going into the weekend doing these shows for an audience who will see you from the other side of their screen? I, I mean, it's, it's weird. It is definitely weird. I think if we've learned anything else from, you know, the world of online education and Zoom conference calls and whatnot, it's weird. <laughs> there's yeah. definitely a strange feeling. Um, you know, it's kind of, twofold I think on the one hand because I've never done a one woman show before uh, I'm used to being in casts of you know 12 20 40 and being constantly surrounded by people and if you're not in a scene you're the audience for somebody else's so you really get that feeling of an audience the entire process with mm -hmm. this I had a one person audience for the majority of the time and so I just kind of I think accepted that in my mind like oh yeah this is just kind of it's me telling a story um, then the joy of hearing new reactions from, uh, you know, the production side of things during this past week during tech has been like, oh, the laughter gasps, like, what is this, like, audible, you know, reactions that I'm getting. So it's been, it's been really intriguing, um, weird, you know, but I think a big part of it is I love the story so much that I'm just happy to actually kind of just get up there and tell it and like, you know, the sound of my own voice. It's, I enjoy it. So I like yeah. hearing that story. And it's just really, uh, it would be, I look forward to an opportunity to get to have a live audience in front of it um, in whatever decade that will be <laughs> in the coming, you know, millennia but it's um it, yeah it's been it's been weird but kind of a learning exercise in a way yeah absolutely it's a good chance to certainly keep your skills sharp if nothing else <laughs> um i should have mentioned or, or asked earlier uh our Katuit audiences what might they have seen you in either at the center or recently or uh you know at other theaters what were you uh, doing before uh 2020 happened 
Certainly. So uh, in, I was about to say last year in 2019, no, pardon me. I won't end, I feel it. <laughs> five years ago in 2019, um, I was Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing, um, which was during the summer of 2019 at Katuit. Uh They might have also seen me as Miss Hannigan uh, in the uh, Annie Part 2 Electric Boogaloo Second Round Edition. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, right before everything shut down, I closed a production of Assassins uh, over at the Eventide Theater Company. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, so I had I had a blast. Uh, I was glad I got to close the show before then, but I was also in rehearsals for Spamalat uh, over at Four Seas at the Tilden Arts Center, which unfortunately we had to, let's say, postpone um, yeah. until, you know, things return. Um, so yeah, they might know me from that. Maybe. I, I hope if they do. anyone did see you as Beatrice uh, in uh, Much Ado About Nothing, I cannot recommend you watch this play enough. I mean, the characters couldn't be more different, uh, <laughs> but the way you sort of command the stage in, in both roles, you were absolutely phenomenal uh, as Beatrice. Uh, and they both have this sort of presence, this sort of magnetism, and you have this great ability to just hold your attention for a long period of time. So you had, I mean, it was Shakespeare, so of course you had many monologues in that show, and now you just have one extended one, so. <laughs> super long monologues. Super extended, you just don't stop. <laughs> it's not hard talking. to do a one-person show, right? Just keep, start talking and don't stop. <laughs> Oh, well, I am very much uh, looking forward to being able to share uh, your performance uh, with the folks at home. Uh, let me uh, head over here. So uh, again, that's uh, Charlet. That's running uh, this Friday, the 5th and at 7.30. And we have a matinee performance on Saturday at 2.30. Uh, and then starting next week, you'll be able to rent the uh, performance at home uh, and watch it on your own time if you can't catch it live, which is uh, a pretty cool feature. Uh, a lot of sort of... Uh, Theater rights organizations have been really good about helping, you know, community theaters, uh, you know, of our size, be a little flexible in how we're presenting material. Um, so, Holly, do you have uh, anything else uh, you wanted to add? Anything you wanted to say to our audience before we go? Goodness, I, I just I hope they get a chance to see it and enjoy it, and that they continue to support their local arts organizations as we all kind of figure our way out through this crazy, crazy time. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you should know that if you do make a purchase and please check the description of this video, um, you'll see exactly uh, where and how to uh, purchase the live stream or the rental starting uh, starting next week on the 11th. Uh, the proceeds are split between the center and the artists. So you are supporting artists, you're supporting the art center. Uh, and it's been a long time since anyone has been able to do theater. So uh, your support means so much now uh, more than ever. Um, but Really, we're just hoping to give you something until we can finally get back to doing uh, what artists like Ali, like myself, like uh, Tara and Emma and the other show want to do, which is perform uh, live theater for you and with you. So thank you so much to uh, Holly for coming out and uh, doing a little interview with us. Uh, and I encourage everyone at home to moo it at Katuit. <laughs>